Mr. Obama, you are the biggest fraud that has ever been perpetrated on the American people. You bailed out bankers and placed them in your cabinet. You placed Monsanto in charge of your FDA. You helped out pharmaceutical and health insurance companies with Obamacare. You expanded Bush's wars and started new ones with drones, branding yourself a humanitarian warmonger. You bragged about crippling sanctions against Iran, though they directly affected civilians. You extended the Patriot Act and asserted your right to spy on the American people. You also asserted your right to detain them without trial. You even seized the authority to assassinate Americans without providing any evidence of their guilt or offering them due process of law. You viciously punish journalists and pursue whistleblowers who expose your crimes, though you vowed to protect them when you were running for office. You arm Al-Qaeda insurgencies, refuse to close Guantanamo, and you, along with Congress, have criminalized protest. And still, you have the audacity to scold dictators about democracy, protest, and freedom. Okay. Uh, more than one million people around the world have viewed that video, and it's called Why I'm Burning My Last Bridge with Obama, made with care by the hands and mind of our next guest, one who has reached the point of no return with our current president. She's a political activist, writer, blogger, and now a libertarian who, to paraphrase Howard Beale from the movie Network, is mad as hell and won't take it anymore. Welcome Carrie Wedler to Midpoint today. Carrie, thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. Let me guess that you've never seen the movie Network. I'm just going to say that probably off the top, right? You've never seen it. You know, seen I it. actually have. I made a point to watch it a couple months ago, and it was magnificent. Outstanding. Okay, <laughs> now, we, now we can be on that same. See that? The age, the age just disappears right away magically like that here. Uh, well, <laughs> let's, let's start out first of all. You were a big Barack Obama supporter at the beginning, correct? Huge. Embarrassingly huge. Okay, <laughs> why embarrassingly huge? What made it so? Um, you know, I just did not do my research. I did not do my due diligence. I was a history major in college, and I just loved the speeches he made. I had read speeches in my history books, and I just thought, well, this sounds like JFK. It must be the real deal. And I waited three hours in line to see Michelle Obama give a speech at UCLA, and Obama wasn't even there, and I waited for her and Oprah. So I was just all out, running my mouth, telling people that he was going to change history, and if they didn't vote for him, they were on the wrong side of history, and... Clearly, I was on the wrong side of history, so I learned my lesson. <laughs> well, but you are like, and I'm, I'm going to go ahead and say this honestly, there are many people who would say that you are like a lot of young people who simply were just caught up in the whole Barack Obama effect. And I said this to one of our earlier guests. The Obama administration, when he first won election, did a marvelous job on social media, and they captured a lot of the youth mm -hmm. simply because of that. Would you agree mm -hmm. with that as, as a big reason why you and perhaps a lot of people of your age voted for him at the time? Oh, absolutely. And he had celebrity campaigns. He had A-list celebrities making music videos for him and coming on the trail with him and tweeting support for him. And even now they tweet support for Obamacare and they try to quell people or try to push people into supporting his policies. So it's been an ongoing thing. And it was probably most pronounced during the 2008 election cycle and 2012. Okay. Now in your video, you list an awful lot of reasons why you are now a non-supporter of the president. Mm -hmm. But there had to be a tipping point sooner or later. Or let's start at the beginning, first of all. Not the tipping point, but the very first thing where all of a sudden you said to yourself, you know, this isn't quite working the way I thought it would. Well, you know, those are one and the same. I was actually, I wasn't very informed about what was going on in the world after Obama won because, like, a lot of supporters, I just figured he was going to solve everything. So I didn't have to worry. And I spent a couple years just immersed in my own life, my own college life, and after college I was doing an internship at a film studio. I thought I wanted to go into Hollywood. And it was just sort of that juxtaposition of being in a film studio and also being completely uninformed that I started to think that maybe I should start looking into what was going on in the world. And one of the first articles I read, I remember I was just sitting in the office, literally went to Google, hit search. And one of the first articles was about an appointment that Obama had made um, of a Goldman Sachs official. And when I read that, I just sort of, that was it. Haywire, done. I wasn't interested anymore because I knew that Goldman Sachs had been so instrumental in corrupting the government and in creating the economic collapse. So even as much as I had been programmed to love Obama, I knew that there was something wrong with him supporting Goldman Sachs. And from there, I just kept doing my research, and I never looked back. And he kept committing crimes, so it made it pretty easy on me. What about those who would say, wait a minute now, any politician is going to make mistakes. Politicians are going to say things, and they're not always going to be able to carry through on it. So there are those who would say to you, hang on, Kerry, Barack Obama is no worse than any other politician who happens to become president of the United States. 
You know, I would agree on multiple levels because I think that all politicians tend toward corruption, so I can't single him out for that. But what I can single him out for is being such a good actor and being such a good puppet and telling the American people everything they wanted to hear and then doing the exact opposite. And that takes a lot of skill and a lot of planning and a lot of cunning. And so I think that's why I had so much against him. Would you say that a lot of people your age, and I hope you don't mind, a gentleman never asks a lady in age, but I, I'm afraid <laughs> I'm going to have to here. You're how old? I'm 25 years old. Would you say that many people 25 years of age in your group, uh, give or take a few years, are a lot like you were, that they are still not very informed about the issues and whom they're actually voting for? You know, I'd say they're not very informed, but for the most part, they're aware of what the Obama scam turned out to be. As much as they're apathetic, they're not really falling for his lies anymore, which I think is an improvement from a few years ago when everyone was still sending their rallying cries out and claiming that he was the best president ever. <laughs> okay, so you're a libertarian now, correct? Absolutely. If you had to cast a vote today, whom would it be for? I can't not vote. <laughs> <laughs> no, you can't not vote. <laughs> you can tell us that you'd like it to that. remain a secret for the moment, of course, that you want to remain private, and we'll, we'll take that. But if you know, uh, I'd I like actually, to know. I don't think that there's someone I would support right now. I'd like to see who comes out and who becomes a front runner and who actually has a chance. But I've sort of lost faith in both parties and in the electoral system in general. Uh, I mentioned over a million votes uh, on your, uh, what are you at now? Do you know how many uh, number you're at? Um, I believe it's at a million one hundred and thousand something. And if you were to guess, are many people supporting you on it? What kind of a reaction are you getting from the, uh, the global audience? Oh, I got mostly positive. Everyone was really enthusiastic about it. And I think just grateful that someone voiced how they were feeling. And of course, I did have people from both sides of the aisle that were upset with me. But for the most part, everyone was really supportive and a blowtorch helps. That was really fun. So. Yeah, we're actually using the blowtorch here right now. That's very nice. We, we saw the video and I, I don't know if I've ever seen anyone use a blowtorch so well for that matter. And I'm, I'm sure you, all, you also have the fire extinguisher handy just in case. Um, uh, but 15 seconds left. Are you going to make any new ones? Anything else oh, on the, on the tour? I've got plenty on my slate. I have all sorts of stuff coming. I just became a yoga instructor, so I'm going to do some yoga classes for the politically informed because we can be pretty stressed out. I but I also it. have plenty of more commentary on the news and the nature of government and on culture as well because I think that that factors in a lot to people's apathy and ignorance. We may have to talk to you again. Carrie Wedler, congratulations. Thank you so Thank much, you, and we'll definitely do this again. It was a pleasure. Thanks all for right, having me. All right, take care, Carrie. Um, she went out, said it. People are agreeing. Uh, we'll talk about that and a whole lot more as the day goes on. Good for her. Stay with us on Midpoint. We question everything.